Let's make an ephemera idea junk journal. This will be a journal used for this year's Defemorember, which is a December daily series hosted by Luisa Heinzel and myself. Luis and I wanted you to have enough time to prepare. So we have had many, many, many hours of video calls to discuss how to make last year's very popular Defemorember series even better. I'm so blown away by your response of last year's series. If you search for the hashtag Defemorember on YouTube, you will see there are currently almost 700 videos. On Instagram, there are approximately 3,480 posts under that hashtag Defemorember. And posts are still coming in throughout the year. I'm absolutely speechless about your reaction to this series and thank each and every one of you who participated, whether you posted on social media or not. You are what makes this series so fun. If you're not familiar with Defemorember yet, this is a series in which we make ephemera using prompts every day from December 1st to the 25th. The word Defemorember is a combination of December and ephemera. And I had the hardest time pronouncing it throughout December last year. But as you can see, I've practiced and by now I'm fluent. <laughs> it was so fun to see how many other YouTube creators struggled with this word as well. Hi everyone, it's Michelle. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the first day of December. Oh, I don't want to say this every time because I can't say it. <laughs> Clearly, I can't say it. Hello, hi, it's Liz here, and I'm here today to do another episode of Ephemera December, which is Defemera Ember. Defemera Ember. Uh huh. Something that is called, and I hope I'm saying this right, December Fembra. Defemera. Defembra. In case you have not seen this series, you can find the playlist linked below this video. It's not Christmas themed, by the way, but you are, of course, welcome to make all the ephemera and journal in a Christmas theme, if that's what you like. So that you get a better idea of what we made last year, I want to give you a glimpse of the journal I made after Defemorember into which I added my ephemera made during last year's series. So the making of this journal is also in the Defemorember playlist linked below. So you have an idea what the ephemera that we made looked like. So for example, we have these page tabs, we have a pocket, we have a tuck spot, a belly band, another pocket, some more embellishments, and so on and so on. So all of this we made during the series and that's the goal again for this year to make plenty of ephemera during December. So Louise and I bounced a lot of ideas around for this year's Defemorember to give you the best experience possible. And one of the elements we want to add for this year is to make a journal in advance to have it ready to add ephemera into that we create during Defemorember. The thought behind this was to have a junk journal with different ephemera ideas to look through for inspiration when you need ideas for what to add to future junk journals. We also wanted this ephemera idea junk journal to have a theme to go with the ephemera that we create during Defemorember. So we will have a freebie with vintage animal images for you, as well as a free prompt list. And we will post the prompts and this animal freebie on Instagram and our YouTube community pages a week before our Defemorember series starts. So we will post them on November 24th. And we're telling you all this already now, so you can follow along and use the same theme as 
we are this way you have a month to make yourself a journal before we start making the ephemera for it in december as i mentioned you can make your ephemera and journal with any theme you want of course the prompts are generic and not christmas themed and not related to animals an example of the prompts we will use might be lace and postcard and as a focal point we would use the animal image but you can use any image you want of course you can also use your own animal images, maybe from books or magazines or other printables. We decided to share our freebie with animal images, especially for those of you who don't have access to such materials. So to summarize the most important information, if you want to follow along, make a junk journal until December 1st for the start of December with papers to match either our animal theme or any other theme you want. We're posting the free prompt list and animal freebie on November 24th on Instagram and our YouTube community page for you to download for free. From December 1st to 25th, Louise and I will both have a video each day using our prompts and an animal as inspiration. And because it's not pressure enough for us to make a junk journal cover for ourselves on camera, <laughs> We decided that we will make a journal for each other. So that's why you see this array of doilies and fabric. If you know Louise's channel, you know she likes her grunge. So we need to grunge these up. But first, let's start with something easier. So we wanted to make each other a journal, combining both of our methods and tastes. <laughs> Not so easy, but I think we are very, very compatible. So typical for me would be my paper bag junk journals, to which I'm going to try to add a cover, which is probably more Louise's than my style. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> but for the inside, I'm going to make my life a little bit easier. And I'm going to use this beautiful fabric. Many of you will recognize the images here. They are, of course, Tim Holtz. And if you know Louise's channel, you will know she is a Tim Holtz junkie. <laughs> And I know she doesn't have this fabric, so hopefully she will be happy with this. And I think it fits perfectly to our theme of animals and nature. I'm happy to link the online store from Germany where I bought this and a few other Tim Holtz fabrics. If you're not in Europe, it's probably not the best option. <laughs> but I'm sure if you search for Tim Holtz fabrics, you will find stores near you that sell them. Obviously, this needs to be grunged up at least a little bit for Louise. Otherwise, I don't see how she's going to be happy with this. So I'm simply going to spray this with a mixture of coffee and tea. No particular reason why it's coffee and tea. That just kind of happened. So I'm just going to spray this. Not everywhere. Or, I don't know. <laughs> I want to make some areas more dark than others. We'll see how this looks. This is not going to be grungy enough. I can already tell that. So maybe I should also add some Distress Oxide. I know Louise's favorite color of all times is Forest Moss. So luckily I have that spray here. And I also have some frayed burlap that might work as well. And I also have this Dinah Wakely Media Gloss Spray in Syrup, which is like a beautiful caramel color. Actually, now I'm having a thought. I want to spray through stencils. But in order for that to work, I need to let this dry first because otherwise, obviously, it's going to just spread and we won't see the stenciling. So let's dry this first. Okay, this is dry now. And to add a little bit of my own style, I of course have to add my favorite stencil or mask. Again, I will link this for you below. It's by Studio Light and it's Grunge Mask SLGR Mask 16. So let's spray this. What color? I think it needs to be forest moss. I really hope this is going to not look disastrous. <laughs> Louise, I apologize if it does in advance. <laughs> I should have tested this on another piece first, shouldn't I? Oh well, all or nothing. 
let's gently lift this oh that's good it's it's subtle i like that okay okay thank goodness i i was ready for a disaster so let's add some more here mm -hmm. and then we need some up here as well and we can add this on the paper here maybe we can use that inside the journal for decoration gorgeous and then let's also add some of this here this is again studio light it's from the series grunge artists atelier it doesn't say the number here but i will link this for you below as well and this i want to do with the frayed burlap oh yeah that's perfect i love it i hope louisa loves it <laughs> that's more important let's add some here as well oh this is gorgeous and let's add some down here mm -hmm. do we need any more maybe just a little bit here okay again let's add this to our packaging paper oh that's just beautiful so i think this cover is ready to go once it's dry for the outside of the cover i want to use these materials so they're doilies and this is a dish drying towel i am not 100 percent sure that this is wide enough to cover the whole journal but if it's not i can always i guess attach another piece or one of these pieces or something to make that work we will see i also have the option of course to add this beautiful pink border i am sure louise would totally love this <laughs> So I re-watched some of Louise's videos to really get a hang of her techniques because she has a lot. <laughs> and I'm going to combine two techniques that she uses on covers and I will link two videos in which she demonstrates these techniques in detail for you below so that you can follow those because this is not a tutorial. This is trying to make something that Louise hopefully will like. <laughs> and this is a great opportunity for me to test some of her techniques because if I don't like it, I just give it to Louise. It's totally fine. <laughs> so in one of the videos that I linked for you below where Louise shows how she dyes her fabrics that she uses for covers, she uses her Distress Oxide ink pads and I chose six colors here. I'm not totally sure I'm going to use all six, but just to show you what I chose. Rusty Hinge speckled egg which is of course my favorite color so i need to include it even though i'm not sure how well this one will show up because it is very light but she and i will know it's in there <laughs> of course we need vintage photo then i have frayed burlap peacock feathers because on the inside cover we actually had a turquoise feather so i had to include peacock feathers on the cover and iced spruce but i just realized i'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> these should not be crumpled up yet that's the next stage so in the first stage we're going to add these oxides onto the fabric while they're dry so let's start with some more neutral tones so i'll start with the braid furlap and louisa says instead of just stamping it there because then you'll get a square imprint you should turn it so that you don't get the square impression. So let's try that. Okay, well, sort of. <laughs> I guess once we make it wet, uh, that will not be an issue, hopefully. Otherwise, this will be a video of how not to do it. So I'm going to do this on all of my pieces so that they all go together 
This one is already coffee dyed, as you can see, so it might look a bit different. And I have more here than I will need on my cover, but first of all, I want some options to play with because I don't know what it will look like in the end or how much material I will use. And also, I think it might be cool to have some extra bits to use on the inside. So I'm just randomly adding some of this to each piece, leaving space for other colors. And if you're doing this for the first time, I understand this might be difficult to grunge up your beautiful doilies like this. It's definitely a challenge for me as well. Now, where did I put my lid? Ah, it's buried here. Okay, so then let's let's be bold and add the peacock feathers. This is a very strong color. I know Louisa loves turquoise. I love turquoise as well. So again, we match beautifully in that way. I really wonder how Louisa would react if I would just make her a pink journal. <laughs> what would she do? Would she send it back to me? <laughs> Throw it in the trash can straight away. <laughs> I don't think I want to find out. <laughs> Next, let's do some rusty hinge. This mixture here just makes me happy and it will look so much yummier once we add the water. And very important, Louisa says that when you use the Distress Oxide pads, you don't have to worry about adding this now, for example, on top of another color. It will not contaminate this Oxide pad because, uh, yeah, she said because it soaks into the fabric so quickly that it won't matter. I trust Louisa, otherwise I would not be doing this. So we absolutely need the speckled egg. Whether we can see it in the final product or not is secondary in this case. It just needs to be in there. Okay, so now comes the part with the crumpling. I'll do this one separate because it's such a large piece. So we crumple this up and then we spray it. Or did she also spray it before she crumpled it up? No, I think she sprayed it while it was already crumpled. And you're supposed to use a lot of water. You really want, you really want to drench your fabric. So it's looking super colorful right now. <laughs> so let's turn that around. Louisa didn't do this, but I'm thinking <laughs> this will ensure that everything is wet. Oh, wow. Look at this. <laughs> the colors changed totally. This is going to be very interesting. Okay, we will trust the process. So I will first do this with all of my pieces. These I will do all together. This is not something Louisa did, but these colors are way too light for me. I want them to be a lot darker. So instead of adding water, I'm going to spritz my coffee tea mixture onto it. Okay, and I'll do the same thing with this one. Because I don't want to have a pastel cover in the end. Then I'm going to add some syrup gloss spray. This is not what Louisa does, but actually what I could do is because Louisa uses her Distress Oxide Reinkers, instead of spraying it on it, let's just add a bit. So Louisa puts it on the peaks of the folds to get some more grunge effect. So we'll do the same thing, but with the spray. Let's dilute that with some water so that it spreads a bit more. Maybe add some, oh no, not well. Do we want forest moss? No, I think I want the frayed burlap. So I'll do the same thing. Yeah, this will add some more darker areas. Let's spray it again with water. So to me, this looks like a hot mess. <laughs> I can't imagine at this point that this is going to look nice, but I also don't have the experience with it. So hopefully Louise approves so far. So now I will transfer this onto a tray and I will put this in the sun and we'll see what it looks like once it has dried completely, which will of course take a while. 
It's a few hours later, as you've seen, I've completely taken this apart. They are still very wet, but I couldn't help but have a peek to see what was happening. And I realized, I think one thing I forgot was after Louisa put the Distress Oxide refillers on the folds on the top, I think she also turned it around and did it on the bottom. Now I only have it on the top. These places here where I added it are great, but this whole thing just seems too light, too pastel. I, I'm not loving this. I don't know if Louisa would love this. Maybe she would, but I don't know. I don't feel good leaving it like this. This one is actually fine. So I think I need to add some more dark colors because this, yeah, this is not what I want. So I'm going to go in with the big guns and just spray my frayed burlap. I'm wondering if I should spray it through a stencil. I'm just going to try it. At this point, I think it's already ruined, so not much to lose. So I'm going to use the same stencil from before. I know we probably won't see any of the actual stencil, but hopefully it will just be better than having a blob. I am nervous. Let's just see what happens. Oh, that actually looks pretty cool. I did not think that would work so well. So let's, so let's do more of that. Yes, this is so much better. So now I'm going to let these parts dry flat. In the meantime, while those pieces dry, we can start working on the base of the cover. So I want to make a paper bag journal because this is just my favorite way of making a journal. And I don't think Louisa has one yet. So hopefully she will love it as much as I do. So as always, I'm going to start by taking away this bottom. These kind of bags are what we can buy in supermarkets for our groceries. Then I'm going to snip off the handles. And I think I'm going to reattach these handles on the cover. I've done that on previous journals. It's been a while and I think this would be a fun addition because I'm sure Louisa doesn't have a journal with handles. <laughs> When Louisa and I brainstormed, we wanted to have similar journal measurements. So we're going to be using A4 paper. So this would be A4 paper. And we're going to fold them in half for the signature. Obviously, not all papers are going to be the same size, but this is like the maximum size. We're going to have six signatures with five pages per signature. And we're going to make the spine six centimeters wide. I will write here what that is in inches. So I have these old signatures from a journal that I took apart because I didn't want to throw away the pages, but I knew I was never going to use it this way. So they are handy just for me to check the measurements. So I already marked six centimeters. So that's my spine. So that means now I can check for the width of the cover. Actually, I can just leave this here and then start my six centimeters closer. I do want to have a little bit of space here. So let's start the spine here. And then if I measure six centimeters, makes it end here. Yeah, I've never had to measure this before. The only reason why I'm measuring this now is because Louisa wants a flat spine, which I would not do. I would leave it to be a rounded spine, how it would form naturally. I like it to have a round, soft spine, but Louisa wants a flat, hard spine. <laughs> So we're going to do everything to make Louisa happy. What would make sense is to measure from here to here, 16 and a half, and I'll add the same measurement here. So this is where I need to cut my paper bag down. Now I need to cut down the height. So again, I'm going to leave half a centimeter. So that's like fourth of an inch on the top and the bottom. So we cut this. So now the top is like this and the bottom has this fold out, which I'm going to leave in because it just makes the cover more stable. So now if we hold it like this, this is what our journal cover is going to look like. 
Since I want to add these handles, I think I need to grunge those up a little bit first as well. So the idea is to put them in between the two layers. One will be on the back side of the cover and one will be on the front side of the cover in between. And I think that looks really cute. And then you can just carry your journal around. <laughs> so how do we grunge these up? I think the best thing to do would be to add some of the same stenciling that we added. I'm going to use my frayed burlap. It's subtle, so I'm going to do that on both sides for both pieces. And since these are handles and uh, Louise might have them in her hands a lot, I would feel better if I add some matte spray film to these so that the oxide doesn't come off with time. It's a few hours later. Let me show you the dried pieces. So this is the main fabric piece, which I think is fine. I'm quite happy with this one. Then there's this one. This one. This one. This one. This one and this one. And then these last two are not completely dry yet because they are definitely thicker. One and two. So I don't know if this is going to turn into anything nice <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I am very unsure of myself. In the meantime, I've sewn around this bag and I've just put the handles in between the two layers. I don't know why they're not centered. How did that happen? I guess we'll have it this way because it might make more sense to be further down, I think. But I was thinking if Louise doesn't like the handles, it's very easy to just snip them off. So Louise, you have my permission to do that if they're in your way or if you just think they're ugly. <laughs> so let's choose which one should be on front. I think it should be like this. Oh, or maybe. Actually, I think this is the front. Yeah, here it's darker. So I can cut this down. How much do we want it overhanging? So I will cut a strip off the front. Oof. Okay, then I need to cut it here for the height. So I've cut myself a six centimeter spine and placed it approximately where it will be so that I can see what the shape of the journal will be to help me with the decorating. And I see here that the spine is actually quite substantial, definitely wider than anything I've ever done before. But I guess for six signatures, you need that kind of space. So this will help me see how I can place the doilies. So I'm just going to play around with some options because I have no idea what I'm doing. I think I'm going to keep it simple like this. First of all, because I don't want to cover all of this up. I mean, what's the point if I'm covering it all up? Even just this, I think, might be cute. I might not even add this. Hmm. 
And the second reason is that uh, Louisa and I decided that we're not going to put any embellishments on the cover because we decided we want to use a prompt of our choice as a decoration for our junk journal cover. So during Defemorember, we'll just decide spontaneously, okay, this prompt for this day with this animal is going to be the prompt that we don't put into the journal on a page, but we'll put it on the cover. So that's why we wanted to leave the cover a little bit more plain. You're welcome to do that as well, of course. I think it's fun. So I'm going to first iron these pieces and then I will sew them on and then I will make a decision whether I add something on this spine or not. So as you can see, it looks a bit different again. <laughs> After I ironed the pieces, I also ironed the two pieces that weren't dry yet. So that was this round one and this square one and then I just played around it with some more and actually I like this much better so this is you can't really see it so this is the whole cover now and the spine looks like this which I think is a lot prettier and that's of course the piece that you will see once it stands in the bookshelf then you just see this spine so I think that's very important for that to be nice I also like this shape here for the front and the back and there are still plenty of options to decorate the front as well. So I first added a little bit of textile glue with a brush on the inside, then I added my fabric, then I put the lace on top, also added a little bit of glue by brushing that on underneath these pieces, these bigger pieces, and then I also glued them because they were a little bit too big on the inside on both of these edges and after I let that dry for maybe half an hour or so I took it to my sewing machine and I sewed around the whole cover twice with like a wonky stitch and yeah a little bit of zigzag stitch here and on the bottom here and that's my cover. I can't sew this on yet. I have cut it to size. I love the way it looks, but I can't sew it on yet because we're going to be sewing the signatures through this first. So through the cardboard, which I've already cut to be six centimeters. And once we've sewn the signatures through here, we can then glue this piece onto the cover. But for now, let's do some shopping. <laughs> Let's go to Louise's shop and see what papers we can match together. In Louise's Etsy shop, and I'm just blown away. Can you see she has over 50,000 sales already? I am super impressed with that. Louise, you go girl. <laughs> so we are trying to find papers that will match with mine, which is super overwhelming because Louisa has so, so, so many totally amazing papers. And I think most of these will actually go really well together with my papers, especially I think I'm going to look at the nature themed ones because I think I have quite a few nature themed ones. And the first one that I would love to put in that journal is one of my most favorite kits of hers, which is this one, Watching Over You, which actually has two volumes. So wait, actually, let's go down here. Oh, that's the tag. So to this kit, there are a lot of different parts. And I believe when you go into one... Let's do this. So this is the volume one. Here you can always see what it actually is. So they're junk journal pages. This is the name of the kit. And I believe that she has somewhere, let's find it, which ones go with that kit. Yes, so here she has on the side. So you have to open this description of the item. And then if you go down here, you can find the whole paper collection here. So you, here you have Watching Over You, Volume 1, Journal Pages, Volume 2, Journal Pages. Then you can find Giant Tags, Volume 1, Giant Tags, Volume 2, Collage Paper, Journal Backgrounds, and the Ephemera Pack. So that is super helpful. Let's have a look at these pages. And there's even a video. Oh my goodness. So this is how they could look in your journal. 
That is amazing. Luisa, your shop is next level. Wow. So beautiful. Okay, let's have a look at the photo. So these are what the journal pages look like. I am so in love with these. I also have to use these because she actually asked me whether she could make this kit before she created it because this one is actually based on last year's Defemorember where I put children on animals in my journal and I still <laughs> need to make a whole journal with that. But she was inspired by that to make this kit and she just wanted to be sure that it would be okay for me to use the concept. And of course it was. I mean, I was so happy to see what Louise would make out of this and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So that's volume one. So I definitely think I need need to use this so then let's check out volume two we can go right there from this link so this is volume two so it's obviously the same style okay we've seen that video and so here are the pages and as you can see here this one has the birds but not the children so this is beautiful as well so that's definitely i think another one i might want to use let's see Let's go back to her website. I could use all of these. These are just really so cute. Ooh, this one also is absolutely gorgeous. Nautical garden. I just love this color. And I think this color would actually work really well with my greenish turquoise-ish bubble papers that I have in my shop. And look how beautifully wintry this looks. Yes, I think that's a definite must for me what i'm looking for is there's a kit with dragonflies i'm sure we'll find that oh this is so hard oh these junk journal quotes those are fabulous as well i think i'll have to add some of these i love these tickets how fun are they random act of crafting <laughs> journal with me junk is life creative mind join the junk journal party how cute is this? Junk journaling is not a hobby. Louisa, these are so cool. I'm not messy. I make junk journals. <laughs> junk journal, my secret love. Don't call it junk. It's my journal. Oh, these are so adorable. Oh, and there's some empty ones. So you could just leave them empty or stamp your own things on it. Brilliant, definite must for the journal. There's mushrooms. You could always use mushrooms. Oh, this is so difficult. I could use everything. Louisa has a lot of nature themed printables as well. But I'm trying to see which ones would work best with my own digitals. Of course, a lot of more empty background pages would work. For example, her tea bag backgrounds are just gorgeous. But I want something more with images, focal points that really stick out. How about these vintage birds? They look very wintry and I think they would go really well with, for example, my Dreaming of Summer kits, which also have birds. These are absolutely gorgeous. There's some ephemera pages as well. So this is a full junk journal kit. Yep, I'm definitely keeping that one in mind. Oh, here's the dragonfly. Yes, found it. Yes, how gorgeous. Yes, that is a definite must. Yes. Thank you so much, Louise, for making a dragonfly kit. I actually have not made one. I probably should make one, right? <laughs> that would make sense. Oh, what about these vintage birds? Oh, yeah, that is totally up my alley. Those are really beautiful. I love that they have, like on one side, they have the images and then there's a lot of free space where you can like journal over or put things over. I like that they don't always have to be so busy and there's ephemera as well. Yes, we'll do that one as well. So I will keep looking through these to choose my final papers to go with some of my own digital papers. That's going to be a lot of fun. 
and you can then see the final result of the journal I make for Louise when she unboxes it, which will be on November 29th. So on her channel, you will see her unboxing my journal I made for her. And there will also be a video where I am unpacking the journal that Louise made for me. I cannot wait to see it. <laughs> So maybe you want to have a look through the items as well on both of our shops. I will link both shops down below in the description box for you in case you want to already have a journal ready to go for Defemorember. It's not a must. You can just make the ephemera and make a journal later. Totally up to you, but this is what we are going to do. See you for the final flip through then on Louise's channel. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.